Bien, bonjour et bienvenue à notre rendez-vous de midi. Nous sommes aujourd'hui le mardi 26 juillet. Je pense que je n'ai pas besoin de vous rappeler qu'un conseil extraordinaire énergie se tient aujourd'hui à Bruxelles et que le vice-président exécutif Franz Timmermans et la commissaire Kadri Simpson y participent au nom de euh, la Commission. Les ministres discutent évidemment du paquet présenté par la Commission européenne euh, la semaine dernière, économiser le gaz pour un hiver sûr, et feront le point sur la situation énergétique globale de l'Union européenne et dans chaque État membre dans le contexte de l'agression russe en Ukraine. De plus, lors d'un repas de travail, les ministres et la commissaire Simpson aborderont le sujet de la coopération énergétique UE-Ukraine avec le ministre de l'énergie ukrainien, Herman Galuchenko. La commissaire Simpson participera à la conférence de presse qui suivra la réunion. Nous n'avons évidemment pas d'horaire exact à vous communiquer pour le moment, étant donné que cela dépend des discussions au Conseil. Quoi qu'il en soit, nous vous demandons de garder vos questions sur les sujets énergétiques pour cette conférence de presse. Finally, to conclude, uh, the Commission wishes to express its sincere condolences to the family and friends of Lord David Trimble. Lord Trimble was a key architect of the Good Friday Agreements, which uh, were instrumental in building peace in Northern Ireland. That is all for our announcements today. We are now happy to take your questions. Nawab. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, my question is on, of course, uh, foreign affairs and particularly on, on Tunisia. There was a referendum held on the constitution and I would like to ask your reaction on also on to the reports that only 25% of voters participated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nawab, a question for Nabila. Uh, hello, Nawab, and thanks a lot for your question. Um, look, Nawab, we have followed uh, closely the progress uh, of the constitutional referendum in Tunisia, which was held yesterday. Uh, before making uh, or commenting on it, we need to wait for the publication of the provisional results, uh, as well as the official participation figures. Thank you very much. Any other questions? for Nabila on this issue. Please only keep your hand raised in the chat if your question is on this issue. Okay, any other foreign affairs questions um, for Nabila today or for Peter? Oh, he's not here, of course, yeah, sorry. Uh, he'll be back uh, only a bit later. Okay, I see no further questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I go to the chat. Camille. Alvaro, est-ce qu'on m'entend? Oui, absolument. Il y a un problème d'image, visiblement, oui, mais on est en train d'essayer de, de le résoudre. Mais on, okay. on vous entend. On t'entend. Pardon, vas-y. Ok, merci beaucoup. Donc, Camille Gaïs pour Politico. Euh, J'aimerais bien demander euh, si la commission à une réponse notamment par rapport aux commentaires du Premier ministre hongrois Victor Orban euh, du, du week-end dernier sur les, les « mixed race nations euh, ». Est-ce qu'on pourrait avoir un petit commentaire de la Commission à ce propos euh, qui ont été dénoncés comme, comme, plus, comme allant plus loin que d'habitude Merci. Alors, je ne sais pas ce que veut dire « aller plus loin que d'habitude euh, », mais ce qui est clair, c'est que euh, comme tu le sais très bien, nous ne commentons jamais les propos tenus par des responsables politiques euh, européens. Ce qui est clair, c'est que euh, l'Union européenne a euh, un certain nombre de euh, valeurs qui sont inscrites dans les traités et euh, elle met en œuvre des politiques euh, qui sont en relation euh, avec, ces, euh, avec ces valeurs et ces articles du traité. Voilà tout ce que je peux dire sur le, sur le sujet. Camille, je vois que tu as encore ta main levée. 
Non. Très bien, je passe à d'autres euh, sujets. Victor. Yes, hello. Uh, this is Victor Nick from the Czech Radio. My question is on the forest fires that are currently ongoing in one of the national parks in Czechia, quite close to the German border. The Czech authorities requested a help through EU civil protection mechanism, so I'd like to know if you can already confirm that this help is going to be provided, possibly with details what kind of assistance is the EU or the member states are going to provide through the mechanism, and maybe more generally, if you have any comment on this, because this is unfortunately not the only wildfire we can see in Europe so far this summer. Thank you. Definitely. Um, Victor, as you know, the European Union is indeed responding to um, a number of requests for help from, uh, from different member states. Balash being absent, Miriam, uh, who is connected, is replacing him and may be in a position to provide you with some details. Miriam. Yes, thank you very much. I can confirm that Czechia has activated the EU civil protection mechanism today, following the forest fire in the area of Fransko and the national park Šeske Svitkarsko, sorry for my pronunciation. Poland has quickly offered one helicopter and will timely start its operation. So just to confirm, the EU Emergency Response Coordination Center is currently in contact with all member states to assess availability to send European assistance. Thank you very much, uh, Miriam. Are there other questions on um, foreign fi forest fires and emergency aid? Please only keep your hand raised if it is on this. That is not the case, so I go back to the platform. Mathieu. Oui, bonjour. Une question, c'est sur le, le plan de relance polonais. Euh, Peut-être j'ai raté quelque chose, mais je voulais savoir si la Commission avait finalisé son analyse de la loi polonaise de réforme de la justice et si, euh, effectivement, les, les jalons prévus Pour la première tranche, était, était rempli et donc euh, quelle est la, la suite de, de la procédure Merci. Question pour Verlet. Oui, merci beaucoup. Donc, euh, le plan de relance et de résilience de la Pologne a été euh, approuvé par euh, le Conseil. Et ce qui est important maintenant, euh, c'est que. Euh, L'approbation du plan polonais euh, repose sur euh, des engagements clairs pris par le gouvernement polonais euh, pour euh, respecter euh, les, les milestones qui lui permettraient de réformer le régime disciplinaire conformément aux exigences du droit euh, de l'Union européenne. Euh, et ces engagements, comme euh, on l'a déjà répété plusieurs fois ici au podium, sont destinés à répondre aux trois éléments Euh, suivant, donc à savoir que la chambre disciplinaire actuelle doit être supprimée et remplacée par un tribunal indépendant et impartial établi par la loi, que le régime disciplinaire doit être réformé, c'est-à-dire que euh, les infractions disciplinaires controversées doivent être supprimées, et finalement que tous les juges concernés par les décisions de la chambre disciplinaire ont le droit de faire examiner leur affaire par une nouvelle chambre dans un délai précis et sur la base du nouveau régime. Et donc ces engagements que la Pologne a, a donc ces engagements qui sont traduits en euh, jalons doivent être respectés avant que tout paiement en faveur de la Pologne puisse être effectué. Et nous évaluerons aussi euh, la loi euh, en vigueur au moment de la première demande de paiement de la Pologne. Donc, pour le moment, il n'y a pas encore eu de euh, demande de paiement de la part de euh, la Pologne. Voilà où on en est sur le plan euh, polonais. Merci beaucoup. Je crois que le dernier point euh, est, du point de vue opérationnel, le plus important. C'est à ce moment-là euh, que la Commission euh, euh, rendra publique euh, son analyse de la manière dont les autorités euh, polonaises remplissent les conditions euh, du fameux milestone qui est prévu 
euh, qui est prévu dans le plan, et ce, donc, euh, y compris éventuellement par le biais de euh, cette loi à laquelle tu fais référence. Y a-t-il d'autres questions pour Verlet sur ce sujet ou sur d'autres sujets économiques Ça n'est pas le cas. Merci, euh, Verlet. Y a-t-il d'autres questions pour nous aujourd'hui Yes, please. Uh, Alice Tidy, your news. Uh, my question is related to the Safe Gas for a Safer Winter Plan. So when it was presented last week, um, Ursula von der Leyen and the various commissioners emphasized that everybody have their role to play, uh, including state actors and individuals. Is it possible to know um, what the commission itself will do to save energy in this building and in all the EU buildings um, in this quarter? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, what you need to know is that the Commission actually has for many years already had a plan um, to uh, improve its uh, energy and environmental footprint in, um, in general. Um, Balash not being here, I'm going to turn to Miriam to see if she has anything um, that she can add, um, add on this. Uh, Miriam, I don't know if you have more information. Yes, thank you. I can confirm that as part of the human resources strategy, the college has also adopted a communication on greening the commission. The commission does aim to become climate neutral by 2030, thereby setting a good example of corporate climate action. To achieve this ambition by 2030, the commission will reduce in gre its greenhouse gas emissions by 60% compared to 2005. To that end, specific measures will be implemented immediately. The Commission will implement a smarter and greener policy for business travel too and further reduce its emissions from its buildings in Brussels and everywhere. It will also encourage its staff to increase the use of sustainable transport modes for commuting and the small corporate vehicle fleet will be fully electric by 2027 at the latest. The Commission will compensate any remain remaining emissions through carbon removals. That's all I have to say for the moment. Thank you. Yeah. So just to confirm, there's no additional measures that you're taking um, for that time frame that the um, commission, you know, for this winter until the 31st of March that you're making to save energy? No, but I think you need to remember one thing. We, uh, this, the plan that we're talking about is a plan which is addressed to member states, right? And it's the overall consumption in member states uh, which is being looked at. Of course, the Commission um, is constantly looking at ways of uh, reducing its emissions and hence, obviously, um, its, energy, um, its energy use. Um, therefore, um, we are certainly following the philosophy that is, uh, that is behind our proposals on uh, saving gas for a safe winter. Okay, any other questions for us today? Anne-Laure. Oui, bonjour, Anne-Laure Mondésert de l'AFP. Euh, je ne sais pas si vous me voyez. Non, mais on t'entend, donc euh, c'est bon, vas-y. J'ai une question migration euh, à poser après l'arrivée la, d'un millier de, de, de migrants ce week-end en Italie. J'ai posé la question hier, mais je n'ai pas eu de réponse. Je voulais savoir où on en était de la déclaration de solidarité qui a été endossée par euh, 27 États membres en juin dernier. Euh, combien de relocalisations euh, ont eu lieu euh, par, euh, par État, si c'est possible d'avoir un, un breakdown par, euh, par État Et euh, sur les... Concernant les États qui, avaient, euh, qui participaient à ce mécanisme de solidarité, mais sans euh, faire de relocalisation, comment est-ce qu'ils ont contribué euh, à, à ce mécanisme Merci. Oui. Anita. Oui, merci beaucoup, euh, Anne-Laure. Euh, comme, comme tu le sais, euh, selon la déclaration de solidarité, le rôle de la Commission est notamment d'assurer la coordination du mécanisme de sol solidarité. Et on le fait euh, ça notamment par euh, l'intermédiaire d'une plateforme de solidarité consacrée euh, au pacte. 
Aussi, j'aimerais euh, te donner plus de contexte. La déclaration euh, de solidarité fait aussi partie de la première étape euh, de la mise en œuvre progressive euh, du nouveau pacte et euh, été euh, adopté euh, par un certain nombre des de États membres le 22 juin. Et on a euh, plus de 8 000 euh, de euh, demandes de relocalisation euh, qui est ouvert aux États aux, euh, associés euh, aussi. Euh, Qu'est-ce qu'on fait jusqu'à ce point-là euh, euh, On a organisé déjà euh, des réunions sur le mécanisme de solidarité volontaire et euh, aussi euh, on euh, travaille avec euh, les États euh, concernés pour euh, la mise en œuvre et pour l'implémentation de ce mécanisme. Je sais que tu as demandé de euh, dates et de euh, des chiffres euh, spécifiques. Merci. Mais euh, ça, je ne peux euh, pas te donner euh, ce euh, chiffre dans ce stade-là euh, parce qu'on parle euh, avec les États euh, concernés su, sur ce sujet-là. Merci. Donc, travail en cours, euh, Anne-Laure, mais nous ne sommes pas en mesure pour l'instant de donner des chiffres. Y a-t-il d'autres questions sur les sujets migration pour euh, Anita donc, elle est sur le podium. Non. Alors, j'ouvre à d'autres sujets. Yes, please. You need to wait until it's red. Please present. Yes. Uh, Lyubov Pronina, Bloomberg News. I have a health um, question. With monkeypox cases on the rise, is the Commission uh, planning uh, any measures at the EU-wide level? Thank you. Question for Stefan. Uh, thank you very much for this question. I think we have, from the beginning of monkeypox, very closely followed the situation. The ECDC almost immediately came out with a risk assessment following the situation of monkeypox. So the monitoring is something that we have started from the beginning. In addition, as you know, what we've also done, we have concluded a contract with a company for uh, the purchase of 160,000 uh, monkeypox vaccines. This is to help member states to cope with immediate needs they may have in the context of this monkeypox. Um, these monkeypox vaccines that have been purchased are being delivered now to several uh, member states. In the meantime, you also know that the European Medicines Agency has given the green light to this vaccine and the Commission has authorized it as well. So deliveries are ongoing. We continue to follow this um, in the context of the different uh, forums uh, that we have. There's the ECDC, obviously, which monitors the situation. We have our um, Health Security Committee meetings and so we closely continue to uh, follow the situation. And uh, Commissioner uh, Kirakides is also um, about to send out a letter to her colleagues in the different member states to continue closely following the, um, the situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now on this, go ahead. Yes, are you uh, thinking of also distributing or sending vaccines outside the EU? Thank you very much. Uh, it's true that you know that um, in our health response, the global component is always very important. This was the case with our COVID vaccines. This is also the case with the uh, monkeypox vaccines. So in the context of this uh, contract that we've concluded with the company, there's also the possibility to make sure that vaccines can be offered to other parts of the world. Thank you. Other questions on this issue or on other health issues? for Stefan today. That is not the case, thank you. So we move on to other issues. Mose, I hope you're not gonna ask a question on a subject we've already covered, my friend. <laughs> Having arrived somewhat late, <laughs> go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry, I arrived a bit late, so I missed the beginnings and I was, I intended to ask a question about related to the commission proposal last week. Uh, uh, on saving gas, and we know uh, there is perhaps an ongoing Energy Council meeting uh, this morning, maybe I haven't finished yet, uh, 
and we also have heard that there are a number of member states uh, who seem to be against, I mean, uh, the plan. And as you said last week, I mean, it's not a matter of take it or leave it. Uh, I just wonder how can the Commission, let's say, convince those member states, let's say, either there are member states which, <laughs> let's say, are fully dependent uh, on the import of natural gas uh, from Russia and have perhaps their own deals with them, the other member states which perhaps already have diversified and not dependent at all and uh, can import natural gas from other sources, then there are not member states which <laughs> feel they are far away geographic geographically from the war in Ukraine and are less interested uh, in saving or sharing uh, natural gas. Uh, uh, so uh, what can the Commission say to those uh, countries? Because it's a matter of solidarity, isn't it? Mose, I believe you're an old hound here in the press room. So you know the rules of the game. When there is an ongoing council on the other side of the street, which is going to be followed by a press conference, and as I said at the start of the midday briefing, we do not take questions on these issues. I invite you to go to the press conference which will take place at the end of the Energy Council and ask your question to those who are there at the council. Certainly, I'm not going to comment on ongoing discussions in the council. I'm sure that you, that you understand that. Thank you very much. Are there questions on other issues for us today? That is not the case, so um, thank you and um, see you on Thursday for the next council meeting. But um, of course, we remain at your disposal in the meantime. Thank you very much.